Okay, in this one I'm going to uh, compare these two different meters and what they actually do. Now, uh, oh, there's kind of controversy over what's a mager. Well, I've always called this a mager. This will measure in mega ohms, millions of an ohm. It's a uh, it's an ohm meter, and if I put the probes across something, it will read whatever the resistance is. And it uses a battery inside the uh, meter to send power through the line to determine how much resistance there is. Uh, and these meters, they can be used for checking uh, compressor windings to ground, see if they are actually shorted to ground. Um, it's not the best way. Uh, nine times out of ten it probably works because the thing's shorted, dead short to ground, so uh, it's not an issue, but sometimes it isn't. And these things use, uh, this one looks like it uses about a half a volt uh, as a power source to push through the line. Well, that's not a very large voltage. And conceivably, if you had an insulation breakdown on, say, a compressor, and usually this is on compressors we're dealing with, if I put higher voltage through the line, I would be able to, to detect insulation problems. That's what the insulation tester is for. It will put a higher voltage through the lines, not a no amperage or anything, just a tiny, tiny bit of amperage and a high voltage. And sometimes they will find a problem when the ohmmeter won't. Okay, to give you a little closer idea, this insulation tester. Now I can set this in a thousand volts. I can set it to 250 or 500 volts or 250 volts. Each one of those arranges what uh, that's the voltage I'm putting into it. And uh, generally I don't tell people to use the thousand volt uh, range because actually that's a really high voltage and it could uh, damage insulation on a compressor that wasn't designed for that uh, that kind of uh, voltage to be used on it. This side here shows voltage and things. You can use it for checking voltage and so on, but the primary thing you're checking on this thing is going to be uh, windings of some kind of motor to see if I put a high voltage to them it will show a continuity to ground that's unacceptable. Uh, one of the things that happens with these things, they tend to, you know, we, we may find something. We may find, like I've got a compressor here that runs anywhere from 10 to 50 uh, mega ohms. Most compressors don't read anything at all. Most of them you're going to get that. You know, I hit the little thingy and I get that. No continuity at all vast majority of compressors. Uh, every once in a while you get one, you may have contamination, water contamination in it, you may just, the windings are just hashed on it, and it'll show a reading. Now, manufacturers of compressors, I've seen several numbers and it's not real good uh, solid information there. Uh, but as low as 800,000 ohms is still okay. Carlisle says that on some of their compressors. If you read, say, 10, 40, 50 uh, mega ohms when you're using the insulation tester, that doesn't mean the compressor has failed. It means it's probably still running, but it means you should probably look at it again. Generally, what these are good for is if I have a commercial application where they require you know the equipment to be running all the time and they don't want any downtime for you know whatever reason for you know safety or something like that 
you might want to use the insulation tester to see what condition the insulation's in. And if you test it one time and it shows 100 mega ohms, you test it, you know, you record that, and then you test it six months later, or something like that. And if the mega ohms is going down, you're going to have to start being concerned and you may have to replace a compressor. Uh, but it's not a no, a go, no go sort of thing on most of these compressors. Like I said, nine times out of ten, if a compressor shorted the ground, it's a dead short. But you ever once in a while you get one that has some uh, somewhere in between. So that's what that's for. Remember, the voltage is the key here. If I add a bunch of voltage to my uh, resistance test, and that's essentially what this is, is an ohmmeter with high voltage on it. By the way, don't stick your fingers on the probes because you're going to get a nasty little shock. Uh, the, when I put that high voltage, it may show me something that the uh, regular ohmmeter, which is only using about a half a volt, won't be able to tell me. So that's the insulation tester as compared to the meg ohm meter.